One of the most exciting things about the CGI series, at least in my opinion, was whenever an old friend would return. There's just something so novel about it, seeing one of the classic characters returning to the screen. It was always cool seeing old faces and what they got up to. Having a character like Daisy from Series 2 interact with the likes of Stafford from Series 16 is one of the coolest things ever. It's like when Marvel characters cross over, or it's like in Star Wars when Luke meets Rey. There's just a novelty of the old meeting the new. But today, I'm not going to talk about characters that return to CGI, no. Instead, I'm going to talk about the characters who were either planned or set up in CGI, but for one reason or another, never came to be. And to be clear, I'm only going to feature official characters who have confirmation that they were going to appear in CGI. Characters like Caroline who have no confirmation or planned appearances in CGI will not be featured. And I will also try my best not to touch upon rumours. And as to not make the video an incoherent mess, I will also be bunching all the characters' possible reappearances together in their own individual segments. So all the info about their potential appearances will be in one spot. There will be some rumours that I'll have to touch upon, and I'll explain more when I get to them, but for the most part, everything on here has some form of a link to an official source. Now, whether you believe that source or not is another question, but with all that out of the way, let's get into the video, starting with everyone's favourite wannabe returnee, Duke. Duke is by far one of the most requested characters in the CGI series. There were two instances where Duke could have returned to CGI. The first was in Kevin the Steamy, yeah. You know that god-awful episode from series 15? Well, in a random establishing shot storyboard, one of the boarders threw in Duke, Sir Handel and Peter Sam into the shot. While this is a cool reference to the mid Sodor trio, I don't actually think that they were going to bring them back for this one shot. It seems much more likely that they just threw them in as an easter egg since they were on Narragage track, cause, you know, why not? The second time Duke almost returned to CGI was much later on. According to the railway consultant, Sam Wilkinson, the production team had a plan of bringing back Duke to the Earl's Railway Museum. They had discussed if how Duke could live at Ulfstead Castle, but also still travel along the line to the Scarloy Railway, as set up in episodes like The Switch or Luke's New Friend, where Luke and Millie are shown to travel to each other's railways. To be clear, there were never any scripts written for it or anything, it was just an idea that the crew wanted to do. Unfortunately, they never Never got around to it. I personally would have loved to have seen Duke and the Earl interact. Having his actual grace in the show as a character is such a clever idea. Speaking of the Railway Museum, Smudger <laughs> and Bertram. Also, according to Sam Wilkinson, he talked about how the crew had considered bringing back Smudger and Bertram too. Since bringing back Duke, they would have had the assets for Reneus and Duke, and they would have very simply been able to return them into Smudger and Bertram. This is also something that Sam Wilkinson spoke to me about, so yeah, that would have been interesting to see. But much like Duke, this also never came to be, sadly. Derek. Yeah, you know that awful Series 16 episode called Bust My Buffers? Well, okay, maybe it's not an awful episode, there are certain things I like about it. But apparently in this scene right here, where Gordon enters the Diesel Works and passes by Norman and Paxton, they were originally planning to have Derek, you know that random Series 5 character who appeared once and never again? Yeah, well, apparently they were going to create a whole ass CGI model for him, just for this one scene. <laughs> At least, that's how the rumour goes. But here's what some fans actually think happened. You see, Greg Tiernan, the director of the episode, was talking to Simon A.C. Martin, in which he said something along the lines of, Oh yeah, I'm animating the scene where Gordon enters the Diesel Works and passes by Paxton. And Simon A.C. Martin hears this, and for some reason, assumes that Greg was not referring to the CGI series character of Paxton, but instead was referring to Paxman, aka the Paxman Diesel, aka Derek. Now the weird thing about this story is that there's actually a few versions of it, because according to my friend Elliot Ward, he had actually asked Sharon Miller about Derek, to which she allegedly said that she had written Derek into a Series 16 episode. So maybe it was a case that Sharon had written down Paxman in the script, and Greg Tiernan mixed it up with Paxton? I don't know. This whole story seems really far-fetched and convoluted. I'll leave it up to you to decide what happened. Billy Gang. <laughs> 
Remember when Billy Gang was relevant? So Billy was originally meant to appear in the series 13 episode of Thomas and Friends called Splish Splash Splash. However, he was later replaced by Charlie, who was written in as a new character for the season. Apparently this was because Hit wanted to sell more toys and didn't see the need of bringing back an old character like Billy when they could just make a new one. This wasn't an exclusive thing that Hit did to Thomas either, by the way. In fact, Hit did a similar thing with Bob the Builder. You see, in the original series there was this forklift named Trixie, but in the Sunflower Valley era she was replaced with Sumzy to sell more toys, which is the exact same thing that happened with Billy and Charlie. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I actually really wish that Billy hadn't been replaced by Charlie in series 13. For one, it meant Charlie wouldn't have had to exist, which is always a net win in my book. <laughs> but two, I think there could have been some real potential for Billy's character, especially in the Brenner era. Like, I get that Billy is an annoying little shithead in his first appearance, but I feel like with a little bit of that Brenner era magic, they could have really made him work. Honestly, I feel like Billy Billy would have been way more interesting as a character than Charlie. The idea of this little shunter being the rude one is a nice subversion of the big grumpy tender engine trope that the show loves so much. Personally, I would have loved to have seen Billy as one of the shunting gang inside the yard. Oh, Billy gang, now I get it. Arthur. So, here's a fun fact. Ryan, the purple steam engine, went through many different color variants before the team landed on purple. They tried green on him like his basis. They tried blue on him, and oddly enough, they even tried red too, as can be seen in this storyboard with Ryan's voice actor, Eddie Redmayne. <laughs> Ryan was in fact going to be painted red. However, the production team felt it was too close to Arthur, who was also a red tank engine, who is slightly larger than Thomas. So while this doesn't confirm that Arthur was going to appear in the CGI series, it does confirm that the production team were at least leaving the door open for a possible return. Now, personally, I would have loved it if Arthur had returned. I feel like he and Henry could have really bonded over pulling fish trains or something. I think having him run trains down to Balahoo from Vickerstown would have made for a really great little batch of episodes. Hell, when Henry gets written out in series 22, they could have very easily paired them up together as the fish buddies or something, rather than Rosie. Seriously, Rosie just feels so random. Splatter and Dodge. Oddly enough, there were two instances in the series where Splatter and Dodge nearly returned to CGI. The first was in Day of the Diesels. According to Ian McHugh, Splatter and Dodge were originally meant to appear in the movie, however Hit, much like the Billy and Charlie situation, wanted more toys, and so Splatter and Dodge were replaced by Paxton and Sydney. Now personally, I'm a little skeptical of this, not about the whole Splatter and Dodge returning, like I'm pretty sure that pretty much all the TV series Diesels were considered for the movie, but rather I'm more skeptical that it was Paxton and Sydney who replaced them. My reasoning for this is because one of the signature traits about Splatter and Dodge is that they lack ladders on their sides, and as you can tell by Paxton and Sydney, they both have ladders. And you'll notice how Ari and Bert do not. So I'm a little more inclined to believe that Splatter and Dodge were originally going to be maybe Ari and Bert, because, well, you only bring back one set of twins, right? Not both of them. <laughs> the second time that Splatter and Dodge nearly returned to the show was in The Great Race. According to Sam Wilkinson, he originally suggested the idea of Splatter and Dodge being in the railway show as shunters. I don't know if this was meant to be them being repainted or they would have been just the same colours as they were in Magic Railroad, but me personally, I actually kind of like this idea, as we've already got in-universe reasons to why characters like Lady or Diesel 10 exist in the official canon, like how Lady was in that fantasy sequence or like how Diesel 10 lives at the Diesel Works, so it would have been cool to have an in-universe reason as to where Splatter and Dodge work. I also highly recommend the video How Diesel 10 Stole Christmas, as that video actually goes into the idea about Splatter and Dodge being the great railway show shunters. Dennis. It seems Dennis was also a victim of the we need more toys mentality that Hit had. Dennis was originally meant to appear in Day of the Diesels, but was replaced by Norman. Honestly though, I wouldn't be surprised if they had actually made like a model of Dennis, since they made his basis in CGI only to change it last minute into Norman. Out of all the reworked Nitrogen characters, Norman is the one who feels least like an actual Thomas character to me personally. He honestly just feels like 
like a DeviantArt OC of Dennis. Like, oh, he's Dennis's brother but painted red and has a unibrow. You can tell that he was a product of the toy department with the fact that they gave him a unibrow. Like, they did this exact same thing with, like, Billy giving him book teeth or giving whiff glasses. It's just a signature trait that they give the character. It's so obvious. <laughs> he's literally just Dennis but red and with a unibrow. With the amount of development that Paxton Sydney got, it's a real shame that they never did anything with Norman. Proteus. Ah, Proteus, the god of changing his shape himself. While there's no evidence that Proteus was going to reappear in CGI, there was, however, a Thomas audiobook, with John Hassler playing CGI Thomas. Hello? Is anyone there? And Keith Wickham playing CGI Proteus. And then he heard a voice. I am Proteus. It was Proteus, an old mountain engine. So, despite not appearing in CGI, Proteus, ironically enough, had a voice in the CGI series. Your magical lamp! That's what I'm looking for! Then let this lamp guide your way. Which is even more funny when you consider the fact that Proteus didn't even speak in his original appearance. Then, as if by magic, the lamp appeared on Thomas's funnel. Wow! <laughs> Thanks, Proteus! And so, with the magical lamp lighting his way, Thomas headed off. Now, while this doesn't confirm that he was going to appear in CGI, it does confirm that he was at least on the production team's radar. Much like Smudger, I feel like Proteus would have been pretty easy to bring back to CGI since, well, he's just a recolor of Sir Handel. Honestly, I would have loved to have seen this story as an actual story in the series, but oh well, one can dream. Freddy. According to emails from Ben Gosling, apparently Bob Golding, you know, the same voice actor of Sidney and Stephen from Series 17, well, apparently he was going to voice Fearless Freddy, or at the very least did a sample track for him, meaning that they had plans to return him to the series, possibly along with other narrow gauge engines. I'm going to guess since Freddy is the number 7 engine, that this means that they also wanted to bring back others, like uh, Duncan for example, hence why Duncan was referenced in that one Nitron episode from Series 16. While I don't care about Freddy all that much, I will say that Bob Golding, as his voice actor, would have been perfect casting for him. Yes, sir! I'll be back in no time! Honestly, it would have been cool just to see him for that alone. Colin. According to concept art from King of the Railway, Colin was actually going to be one of the cranes who unloads cargo from the Earl's estate, located in the yards at the platforms just outside the castle. Of course, Colin was replaced with a generic crane asset in the yard in the final film, which can actually still be seen. But this does beg the question why, especially considering Colin was always part of the wharf. Also, at some point, Ulfstead Castle was going to be Tidmid Bay, but this was also later changed too. Just the idea that there's a parallel universe out there where Colin could have been moved to Tidmid Bay in the CGI series completely blows my mind. Patrick. According to an interview with Ardlin O'Hanlon, you know, the man who played Dougal in Father Ted, well, apparently he was asked to voice Patrick, the cement mixer. Recently I was asked to play, um, uh, provide one of the voices for one of the trains in Thomas the Tank Engine, but uh, uh, it, it wasn't a train though, it was a cement mixer, which okay. was very upsetting. Um, Patrick the Cement Mixer, to be precise. No hint of racial stereotyping there. Patrick the Lazy and Inefficient <laughs> Cement Mixer. More or less. <laughs> in case you hadn't realised by now, I'm actually a huge Father Ted fan, like I've referenced it in four of my new videos so far. So the fact that there was plans to have Dougal from Father Ted voice a Thomas character is one of the coolest things ever. That's something I actually really appreciate about Jack in the Pack. It's how Irish it feels, you know, like Jack and Alfie having very Celtic sounding themes, Miss Jenny being from Northern Ireland, Oliver having an Irish accent, and now having Patrick be voiced by an Irish character would have been just the cherry on the cake. It's such a shame they didn't do this, honestly. We're all going to heaven, lads. Way. George. George's potential return has to be the oddest out of the whole list. So originally, when Michael Wright was writing the ideas for Free the Roads, he wrote down a list of ideas that he had for the episode, in which one of the ideas was that when Bulgy awakes from his fantasy and skids out of the way, he originally wanted to have George be the one who awakes him from the fantasy. Of course, this was later changed to Max and Monty in the final product, but I find it such a bizarre idea that Michael wanted to bring back George, just so he'd make Bulgy 
swerve out of the way? It's such an odd choice. Although I will say, having an interaction between George and Bulgy sounds like a super interesting idea, and it's a shame that we never got to see them interact once in the series. Kuldi. Again, according to Sam Wilkinson, in an interview with SIF, ever since Series 17, the Kuldifell Railway had been on the production team's wish list, but much like Duke and the Railway Museum, it sadly never came to be. Apparently, they had even measured some of the engines in Snowden first for whenever it would eventually happen, but sadly, we never got around to that. The production team wanting to adapt the Kuldifell stories actually lines up pretty well with the timeline, especially when you consider that they were foreshadowing Godred with the name drop of King Godred as far back as King of the Railway. The foreshadowing for this actually goes pretty far back. Stepney. Back in 2016, there was this Facebook page set up by the production team called Talk Thomas, where Sam Wilkinson would ask questions and get feedback from fans. Sadly, the Facebook page was deleted, and there is very few screenshots from the Facebook page online. However, thankfully, I actually remember reading through the Facebook page, and one of the questions went something along the lines of, should Stepney's branch line appear on Sodor, or should it appear on the mainland? That was one of the questions asked on the Facebook page. So, while this doesn't confirm that Stepney was going to appear in CGI, it does confirm that the crew were at least thinking about it. M me personally, I would have much preferred Stepney's branch line being on the Bluebell Railway in England in the CGI series, even though, ironically enough, the 2014 map seems to confirm that it's on the island anyway, but whatever. Boko! There have been many rumours about Boko's return in CGI, however this was the only legit source I could find for it, and again it comes from the Talk Thomas Facebook page. Unfortunately there's no screenshot or photo on the Wayback Machine, so you'll just have to trust me when I say this, but <laughs> so this is very much a dude trust me thing, but I remember reading it and it went something along the lines of, I'm not saying he will return, but if you had to choose one, would you pick Boko or Bear? The speculation on this post is that the crew were given an ultimatum as to whether they could bring Bear back or they could bring Boko back. Again, while this doesn't confirm that Boko was going to return, it does confirm that the crew were at least thinking about it. There's also some rumours going around that they discussed bringing Boko back for Shed for Edward, but again, as I said, those are just rumours and I'm going to try not to touch upon those. Bear. As I just said, this was another thing that came from the Talk Thomas Facebook page, about how the crew were given an ultimatum between Boko and Bear. Although, I do find it odd that they were asked this question, since surely if you were going to bring back Bear to the CGI series, you'd also want to bring back 199 as well. Personally, I would have chosen Bear in a heartbeat, because honestly, Boko already got his time to shine, and I feel like you can do way more stuff with Bear in the CGI series, like giving him actual Bear growls, or giving him blue coaches, or having him act with way more characters on the main line, I just feel like there's way more stuff you can do with Bear in the CGI series. And also speaking of which, the amount of adaptions that Super Rescue has gotten from the fandom is a pretty clear indicator that this is also something that the fans really wanted as well. So it's a real shame that they honestly didn't do it. Hank. So, at the start of the video, I said that I didn't want to include rumours. Like the rumour that the red chassis in the Steamworks belonged to Hank, for example, even though it's very clearly just a recoloured Spencer's chassis, but red. But, you know, there was a lot of rumours that I didn't feel I needed to include in this video. However, for this particular rumour about Hank and Boko returning in Series 22, I felt it was worth addressing. And also, I don't want to get comments asking about why I didn't include Hank. So, here's how the story goes. So, this was one of the more recent rumours, starting all the way back in 2018, when a pre-screening for Bubba happened, the Sodor Island fan site did a review for the movie, where they said to be on the lookout for a turnee character, and of course, Sif was referring to Sam's cameo in the movie, as he was originally meant to be a Wooden Railway exclusive tie-in character, so having him return in the actual series was technically him returning, but not really. However, with the way that Sif worded it, it sounded like some other returning was in order, and of course fans started speculating about things. Boko was the obvious one because they thought they might bring him back for Edward's branch line or something, lol. <laughs> um, and Hank was the other speculated thing since, you know, he was one of the few international characters of the model season. Of course this proved to be untrue, but of course the Boko and Hank rumours later carried over to series 22, 
true. In fact, there was even some rumors saying that Andrew Brenner had said this, even though that is absolutely not true at all. So yeah, I just wanted to address that in the video because I know for a fact that someone's going to bring it up in the comments. Uh, so I just wanted to clarify that that rumor has absolutely no weight to it at all. There are, of course, other rumors about other returnees, but these are the only real mainstream ones that I figured were worth addressing. So yeah, those were the potential CGI returnees to Thomas, and I'll be honest, I'm actually kind of glad we didn't get to see most of these characters in CGI. While it's nice to dream up of what could have been, like Duke at Ulfstead Castle, or Boko in a Shed for Edward, or getting to see Bear's stories adapted, or getting to see the Kuldi Fell, I'm honestly kind of glad that we didn't, because honestly, the Thomas cast already felt over bloated as it was. So adding even more characters on top of that, like Fearless Freddy or Derek, would have felt like overkill. I think, for the most part, the CGI series played a pretty good game of who returned and who didn't. Besides, not having Boko and Coldy in CGI gives fans the opportunity to write their own stories about how they would have worked them into the era. So, I'll leave you with this question. What characters would you have liked to have seen in the CGI series? Personally speaking, I would have loved to have seen Elizabeth, but let me know if there are any other underrated returnees you would have liked to have returned. Thank you all so much for watching, and a big thanks to the 6,000 people who subscribed to me on the channel. It feels like only last month I was celebrating 5,000. I can't thank you all enough. See you all in the next one. Slongafol!